in this video, I am going to give an overview on Perusal. So what is Perusal? It is a collaborative ebook reader, a platform that was developed at Harvard University. It allows teachers to upload documents for the students to read and annotate collectively outside the classroom. Students are given reading assignments from their teachers. They are asked to annotate the document, whether that's based on the text or any of the images that they see. And they are also encouraged to respond to each other's comments or questions. Perusal will actually put students into groups. And since all of the annotations are gathered in one document, this ends up being more of a group activity. For the instructors, by having these reading assignments, you're engaging your students outside of the classroom. This way they can be more prepared when they come into class. Based on the annotations, you can also see which concepts the students had troubles with, and alternatively, the ones that they are most engaged with. Perusal itself is free, and as long as you use documents that you have the rights to, you can continue using the platform without any costs. However, if you choose to use books or articles that you do not own the rights to, then it'll have to be purchased through Perusal. There are two versions to this platform. There's the standalone version, which means you can use it directly from the website, or you access Perusal through an LMS. At Dawson, that would be through Moodle. Let's have a look at how Perusal works. Here are all the courses that I have registered through Perusal. If I click on one of my courses, I will see all of the reading assignments that I gave my students. Let's have a look at one of my assignments. When a student would like to add an annotation, they can highlight any part of the text and then add their question or comment here. They can also annotate an image. Just have to choose the right icon and then highlight the area of interest and again, add their comment or question here. Any parts that are highlighted in yellow means that there are annotations for that area. So if I click on one, you can see that there's a conversation that's being held between my students. If I click on this icon here, I'll get to see where all of the conversations are in this reading assignment. And the numbers along the right hand side indicate how many annotations there are in that conversation. There are also these icons, these question marks and check marks. A question mark means that there is more than one student interested in that question. For example, if I was to go to this one here, a student highlighted this area and asked a question. Two other students also found this question helpful. Check marks indicate when a certain comment was helpful for a student. If I click on this one here, there was a question that was asked and a student answered the question. Two other students found this comment helpful. By going back to the list of conversations, you kind of get an idea of where the hotspots were in the reading assignments. There's some interesting information that you can obtain for each of your reading assignments. If you scroll to the bottom, you can see that there is a nice summary gives you an idea of how many minutes the students spent on reading your document, how many comments were added, how many questions were added, and the most upvoted annotations. You can also find some analytics and a confusion report. In terms of the analytics, you can get a summary of all of the grades for the students who did the reading assignment. You can have a look at this time heat map gives you an idea of when the students were engaged in the activity, and it's usually right before a deadline. You can see how many minutes a student spent on average for each page. So this way it's an indication of which topics the students might be more interested in. You can also get a student activity report. Here you'll have a, a list of all of your students the amount of time they spent doing the reading assignment and how many annotations uh, they added. You can also get a confusion report. Based on the annotations that were made, Perusal will give you three topics, 
three topics that the students um, had troubles with or found interesting, as well as the annotations that were um, added to those conversations. This would be useful in preparing for your lecture. This way you'll know when to slow down um, and have um, perhaps a more thorough discussion. How are students engaged in perusal? First off, students can get responses to their questions from instructors as well as their peers. Each annotation is actually scored, and the scores are combined together to give them an overall grade for their reading assignment. The scoring is actually based on effort and engagement. It's done by the platform itself, not by the instructor. If instructors include the perusal grades in their course mark, that will help to engage the students more. The overall grade for each reading assignment is based on four criteria. The first one is the quality of the annotations. The more thoughtful their annotations, the higher the scores. It's also based on how many annotations they make and whether or not they meet the minimum number required by the instructor. Did they also complete the assignment in time? And lastly, where were the annotations made? If all of them were made in only one part of the document, then it suggests that the students didn't actually read the entire document. A common question that you may encounter from your students is, what if I don't have any questions or comments to make? My answer to that is usually for them to elaborate on a specific topic, or can they relate this to something else that they've seen in the course or in another course in a different discipline? The maximum grade that a student can achieve in a reading assignment is three. This is a snapshot of what your Moodle gradebook will look like. For each reading assignment, there are grades for each student. And if you click on a particular grade, you can see what it's based on. My recommendation when you first introduce perusal to your students is to not to make the first reading assignment count. This way they can see what it takes to score well on their annotations. Perusal allows teachers to engage students with the course content outside of class. Because the assignment grades are based on effort and engagement, this will help to encourage the students to participate. Reading is normally an individual activity, but with the features in perusal, it allows this to be more of a group activity. And lastly, perusal is a great tool to use if you are interested in doing a flipped classroom approach. For more information, click on the links below. I hope you found this video helpful in seeing what perusal can do for your course.